Today I'm going to show you how to create and use a Prezi presentation. A Prezi presentation is very similar to Microsoft PowerPoint and Google presentation. It's a little more visually appealing. It lets students become more creative with their topic that they want to present. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my internet browser. In my case, I like Google Chrome. And I'm going to go up to my search bar. I'm going to type in www.prezi.com, which already pops up for me. So I'm going to click on that. And it brings me right into my login page. I use the free version because I do use it for educational purposes. If you want to use it for a more business purpose or more professional purpose, you can purchase Prezi and you would just click on this yellow GoPro here and it gives you a bunch of different pricing options to depending on what you want to do. It has more features you can use, but I like the free version. So this is my homepage and I already have a couple of Prezi's. You always have a square here that allows you to create a new Prezi. Over here to the right, I have one I did in January called Technology and Improving Student Learning, where I talked about how it helps student learning and I put in some audio with that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and click on this Learn Prezi Fast to give you an idea of how Prezi works. So when you click on a template, and there are several different templates, you can pick a space template, if you're doing something more scientific, you can use book templates. Actually, let me go back here. If I go to my Prezi, and I go ahead and click on create a new Prezi down here. you have all sorts of different templates you can click on. So these are the latest templates that people have been using. You can always click on more and it gives you endless amounts of templates to use. Cherry Blossom, Subway, Examination, Hourglass, all sorts of different things. But I'm going to click out of that for right now. And I'm going to go back to my Learn Prezi Fast. This gives a very nice overview of how Prezi works and how and what it can be used for. So this is kind of like your map. This is your map. And down here you have the edit button, which is what you would click on when you want to work on your Prezi. Ways to present it remotely. There's a download button. That's if you want to go pro and, and do a pricing option. Save a copy, share with somebody, or embed it. You may want to embed it if you have a blog or a website. So that gives you all the steps on how to do that. But for right now, I'm going to go ahead and click on edit. This blue right here shows that it's loading. And this is my roadmap. This outer layer here, this is your, I like to call it a road map, but it kind of gives you your whole mapped out of how you have everything placed in. So this gives you a general view. Over here on the left, it's very similar to a PowerPoint um, or a Google presentation. It kind of has everything mapped out. This is using circle frames, but you can choose brackets or rectangle or even make the outline invisible if you want. This up here is if you want to add a slide or add a bubble, it lets you choose where you'd like to add it. Two, this zooms in and brings you right to the bubble. So if you want, the first one always brings you up to your roadmap. You click on two. This number two is actually technically your first slide where you can put in information. And you can add your stuff anywhere you want. Once you click on the box, you can click on edit text if you want to go ahead and change things, or you can delete it. 
If you want to move it around, you click on the hand button, and the hand button lets you literally move it wherever. You might want it down here. You might want it over here and have it out a little bit. This hand allows you to move it to however you want. And if you want to add text, you can do that too. And this will expand for you once you click on things. You can change the font, you can change the size, you can change the color, bold it, italicize it, anything you want to do. When you're done, it's automatically saving. So we, I just clicked on here, typed in something, went back. You can click the save button here, but every few minutes it saves automatically for you. If I want to go on to three, three talks about some, you could put other information in here, or you could put little shapes and little slides within the slide. And all I have to do, if I wanted to move this out, I could. I could put it here and I could put it on the outside and that kind of changes out my layout. You can put, depending on how much information you have, you can put as many circles as you want. So let's see. Four is a square, five we go back to using a circle. And you can mix up the shapes too. You can go ahead and decide you might want a rectangle shape in the middle of your presentation. You can do that. If I wanted to click in here and I say I wanted to insert an image, I would click on insert up here at the top, click on image, and I could pick any image I wanted to. I could even pick my dog Tyson right here in his New York Giants jersey. You can insert a photo, symbols, a YouTube video, or a chart. That Charts are more for pro. I don't see that a lot in the educational versions that I use. When I I'm doing presentations in my classroom, it varies. A lot of times I'll use Prezi, because I'm a special educator, I will use Prezi as a more challenging method for students to use to present. It is hard sometimes for my students who have motor skill issues and moving a mouse around and, and being able to click something and slide it around, that could be very difficult. It also could be very difficult, as big as you can make it, Sometimes it is difficult for students who are visually impaired. Sometimes like a Google presentation or a PowerPoint is the way to go. But I recently had a student who, who does have a visual impairment. She recently used a Prezi to talk about her European country that she researched and she liked using it. So I feel that using Prezi allows students to be more creative with things and it's easier to input stuff. If I wanted to slide all the way down, a lot of times I will have students add another frame, and this could be frame number 10. See, I just added a circle frame, and it comes up, and I say this is frame 11, I wanna move it. I can click on the outside here and expand it and make it bigger. Um, I always use, or I always tell students, to use the very last frame for their resources. I wanna know where they got their information, where they may have gotten videos or images from, because in middle school, we're in the process of teaching them what it means to plagiarize and how that affects you and that sort of a thing. I can even actually take this and move it all the way over here if I wanted to, it just changes out my layout and that's fine. And then when you're all said and done, the very last one lets you zoom out and go back. So a Prezi is a really nice way to let students be more creative in their presentations, depending on what their topic is. It gives them a little more freedom. And once they get the hang of it, they really like to use it in order to be able to get their points across. So it's something I highly recommend to use in the classroom.